Hi, everyone, and welcome to this edition of the Racing One Report, where we'll bring you up to speed on the entire world of motorsports. I'm Pete Pistoni. Well, the merger between Gillette Everham Motorsports and Petty Enterprises was finally announced at the end of this past week. And when the smoke clears, the number 43 from Petty Enterprises will come under the roof over at GEM. Reed Sorensen, who came from Ganassi Racing a year ago, will step into that ride. It looks like Elliott Sadler will be back in the 19 car, despite reports about a week ago that the team was going to replace him with A.J. Allmendinger. Sadler will indeed return to the number 19. Allmendinger now will probably drive a limited schedule for Gillette Evernham Motorsports in a fourth car with number and sponsorship yet to be determined. Speaking of Allmendinger, he was in Daytona a week ago, taking part in the Grand Am Rolex 24 test session at Daytona International Speedway, driving the number six Michael Shank Racing Ford Riley in preparation for the 47th anniversary of the Rolex 24 Hours of Daytona on January 24th and 25th. I love working with the Mike Shank Racing Group, and uh, Mike Shank himself put together a, a great group of guys. The last four years, it's the same guys. Uh, every time, he obviously takes care of his team. They're passionate about winning, and uh, he's one of the coolest owners to work for. More than 50 Rolex sports cars were on hand at the test. The fastest speed posted during the session for the Rolex Series teams came from the number 58 Brumos Racing Porsche entry with drivers Darren Law, David Donahue, Buddy Rice, and Antonio Garcia. Fastest in the GT class was the number 86 Farnbacher Lulz Racing Porsche GT3 Cup. Andy Lally, who spent some time in the Nationwide Series and the Truck Series last year, was also part of the test session in Daytona. He'll team up with Justin Marks in the Rolex 24, driving a green-colored TRG Porsche. Yeah, I used to be a little superstitious with the, uh, the green cars, the numbers you could read upside down, and uh, all sorts of stuff like that. But uh, this car looks pretty badass. And uh, can I say that? <laughs> it looks pretty bad. It's, uh, it's a good piece here, and it's running well. It's going fast. So... Uh, uh, I'm, I'm pretty stoked about it. I got Justin Marks as a teammate this year, and uh, I've been buddies with him as, and as well as raced against him for many years. Respect his speed and his talent, and uh, I think it'll be uh, a pretty decent lineup to try and go head-to-head -head with the Mazda guys and our Pontiac guys and obviously the, the, uh, the other Porsche teams that we're going to be racing against. Former crew chief and Nationwide Series owner Tommy Baldwin announced he'd start his own Spring Cup Series operation and says he has 11 employees at work Getting ready for the Daytona 500, no driver has yet to be named, but Dave Blaney, who worked with Baldwin when they were at Bill Davis Racing, is said to be the leading contender there. No sponsorship announced. Baldwin says if they do get sponsorship, he does plan on running the entire Spring Cup Series in 2009. Paul Olin from Athens, Georgia, wrote in and asked in our right turn feature, what years did they run convertibles at Darlington? The answer, convertibles raced at Darlington three times. All were held in the 1950s, where Fireball Roberts won in May 12, 1957. Curtis Turner won the May 10, 1958 event, and Roberts won again on May 9, 1959. And remember, keep those questions rolling into us at racingone.com slash right turn. We'll have your answers on the website, and we might use it here in a future edition of the Racing One Report. And remember, we're only days away now from the Daytona 500 and the start of Speed Weeks at the World Center of Racing, and you can guarantee your best seats by visiting racetickets.com. All your ticketing needs for all the DirecTV Speed Weeks activities are right there at the touch of a mouse at racetickets.com. That'll do it for this edition of the Racing One Report. Keep it right here at racingone.com. We'll have all the news for you covered 24-7, and we'll see you next time I'm Pete Pistoni reporting for this edition of the Racing One Report.